Um, I have a, an a, like I guess you could call it an addendum to this news, and it's not involving the collector. I just I'm a Halloween fan, and you guys know that. And Marcus Dunstan actually talked a little bit about Halloween Returns and that script. And if I look at my notes here, well, I mean, one thing I know off the top of my head is Bob Weinstein, who was the head of, uh, of uh, I think it was Dimension Films, Weinstein at the time. His thing was he wanted a poster with Michael Myers in a, um, an electric chair. That's it. That's what he wanted. He wanted Michael Myers in an electric chair. Work your story around that, okay? But give me that. Because that's the way the Weinsteins were. They were just really impulsive. They would have ideas, a lot of ideas. Some of them bad, some of them good, some of them horrible. And that's that's a hurdle that Rob Zombie fought constantly with, with them. And they even talked about Rob Zombie's Halloween too. Because believe it or not, Patrick Melton and... Uh, and um, Marcus Dunstan, they, I don't, they didn't, I don't think they like wrote part of the story, but they had, they offered advice, I think, because they were working for Dimension at the time. And, you know, they, they're giving their opinions on Rob Zombie's Halloween too. And, and it comes off as like they're fans of it. Uh, but uh, Sean Clark, who was doing the interview, he, he says Rob Zombie's Halloween too is his least favorite movie. Uh, <laughs> so I mean, there's a lot of people that say that I'm like, he hates it more than resurrection. So, and probably if it wasn't called Halloween, it probably wouldn't have been criticized nearly as much. Either. Oh yeah. So you'd have been like, Oh yeah, that's fucking cool. Right. That's why I think, I think the stars for Halloween too. Rob Zombie's Halloween two was, Here you go. seemed to be like the, the art house inside this, this, this artist exploded. It was coming from a place that was entirely personal and didn't need our input. The, um, and he even said that I'm sure he said it in other interviews too. But he like because we were at Dimension when he was doing part two, and we we helped out on a little bit just in, like conversational with him. And 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 he you know and he was like he was really excited about getting past the first one so that he could do his own sort of thing and not be so um, you know uh, forced to deal with canon and all that. And so, and and there was this one, tr the one trailer for the, the second one. It was it was to Knights of White Stand. Yeah, it's, it's, it's one of the best yeah. four. It's one of the best four trailers oh. I've ever seen. I see it's still, Have you seen it, Sean? P three on my dog on uh, as a song. Right? It, it, it was never released. I so love the Knights in White Satin trailer. It was accidentally slipped to bloody disgusted. Oh, I don't. It think was. I, I don't think I ever saw it. It might be yeah. online, but it, it was just like, well, it and, be on. It's and it was so good. I think we agree where it's like. That that's a trap for a lot of people of saying, "Oh, let's get to know them on a personal level and see what makes them tick." Because once you have that, you're left. Well, I'm not sure what you're left with. Like it's so not my, particularly scary. So do you guys like Rob's second film? Here you go. I do. I saw it four times. So I I it's my least favorite in the franchise. I even put Resurrection <laughs> over it. I got to be honest with you. <laughs> Resurrection <laughs> over Rob right. Zombie's Halloween too. <laughs> um, I, I I liked parts of it. I liked I, I liked ideas of it. Um, again, I felt a little bit hamstrung by just the the canon of it all. You can't say the first fifteen minutes weren't really good. No, that was that was one of my biggest problems with it. I was like, just, "This is great. This is kicking ass." Whoa, that was just a dream. <laughs> really? Did you just do that? Really? That's where he lost me immediately right there. Here's my thing with the dream. Okay, I'm gonna comment on this. Because I know a lot of people, they they mention that scene. They hate the dream in Rob Zombie's Halloween 2. But the dream to me is there for a reason. And that reason is to set up Laurie Strode's frame of mind. You know? It, if we go through that entire dream sequence, by the time she wakes up and then we see her, you know, standing in front of the mirror and she looks, you know, very fucked up and disheveled and all that by seeing all that, we know exactly what's in her head. Rob Zombie has pretty much given us everything that's in her head. So it's a great way to start the movie, you know, because you know how messed up she is. So I never had, and plus it's a really cool scene, you know? And I agree with them. Like there's, there's a lot of times I do, I think dream sequences are cop outs, but that doesn't mean you can't have a dream sequence in a movie if it's done right, you know? And I think it's done right. 
I, I actually like the dream sequence and what it sets up in Rob Zombie's Halloween 2. So, so Sean Clark's wrong. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. That's his opinion. Okay. Uh, l- let's move on. Let's play more. And, and, then, and then it takes a while to get going again. Right. Yeah. It's like you know, rebuild. It's a year later. He's been eating the hound dogs or whatever it is. <laughs> eating the hound dogs. I mean, we keep in mind, it's like he was, he, he was also worked over by Bob Weinstein. And it's like, and we were in the middle of that, like where he, you know, he would, Bob would come up to us and tell us stuff. And then we had to like convey it to Rob. And it was just like, and at the end of it, it was like, like, cause Rob will tell you what he wants to do. And you're like, that's fucking good. Let's let him fucking do it. Yeah. You know? And, um, yeah, what he's talking about there, because I've there's an interview with Rob Zombie. I believe it's on like Joe Rogan. If you go look up Rob Zombie Joe Rogan podcast, there's an interview on there, and he's talking about how he had a clear vision that he wanted to do with Halloween Two, and then it's like every other day the Weinstein's would uh, give him a call and say, "Hey, I got this idea. Uh, I need you to plug this into the movie." And Rob Zombie would be like. If I plug your idea into the movie, it's going to completely change the course of the movie. I'm going to have to reshoot this and reshoot that. And it's like that stuff didn't really register with them. And the Weinsteins were just notorious for this shit. Uh, and, and they were just such a pain in the ass. On the good side, they were they were risk takers. The Weinsteins were not afraid to take a risk and, and you know try something. But on the bad side, a lot of times the, those risks cost the movie. So... Let's press on. Here we go. And he had the right idea. I mean, he was doing, it was his Frankenstein story, right? And, yeah. But it just like, but sometimes when you say, like, I mean, we're dealing with Bob Weinstein on like, like um, Hellraiser, like he just never understood what Hellraiser was. And, and you try to explain it. Yep. He doesn't care. And so he'll just kind of try to jam shit in there. And that was our concern when we were doing Halloween Returns. Here we go. Halloween Returns. Uh, we had a pretty clear vision of what it should have been. And he just wanted specific things in it. Like he just wanted, he wanted Michael Myers in a electric chair for the poster. And for a moment he was like, I just want that. And if you guys can figure out how to get to that and then get out of that, do whatever you fucking want. And um, we did. And then, but then they got to a point where like, um, and this always happens with dimension. It gets to a point where it starts going sideways with some weird finances or favors that we need to do and then you know eventually he he lost the rights and but it was like and so we kind of knew i mean you know we had there's that script that's online that people like and we've had done podcasts on and stuff like that but you know i don't know if that would have been we would been able to make that it would have been great if we would have the end result of malik and jody and dan mcbride and blum is they Here's where he talks about Halloween 2018. We get their opinions on Halloween 2018, which I think is really cool. So check this out. They've been able to really just do the version they want to do. Um, and they, they seem not to be fucked with too much, which is which is good. That at least like we can get back. Like we saw, I saw the new mo- new one and it just, it's tone and mm-hmm. it's feel for like, okay, at least this feels like we're back where we should be. If you don't know Halloween and don't tell me kids don't know it and we're trying to lure them in again just like fuck off like just if you don't know it then i don't fucking care like go watch go watch the go watch it the shit you need to know and then watch it it's not my fucking job to to teach you the history of it you know and so that's a good point he's talking about basically how it seems like every new movie and this is this doesn't just go with halloween it goes with pretty much any horror franchise seems like every new movie the the powers that be want to try to set up everything that's happened before so we can get everybody caught up as if people just jump right on you know halloween six and they, they want to be caught up and I, I think that's fine if you throw in like for the first minute but i like what they're saying is like don't put that shit in there it's not our job to freaking catch you up to every single thing especially when you're in the 11th movie in a franchise by then you should know so do your own homework go back and watch it and i think in the end 20 years from from now it makes the movie better because you don't have to do that catch up the whole time. It feels like Must they're be. kind of able to just do that without the bullshit. Well, and like David Gordon Green, he, my mom saw that movie and she <laughs> had only had seen the first one. His and, mother and saw it. Was the movie. A, it was a complete experience, you know, and that, that's what was neat is it had, and it had the author's stamp of approval. It was yeah. neat that I could go, uh, I would, 
I, I saw the, the John Carpenter concert where he plays that theme and he's next to his son. Mm -hmm. And this entire room is just, he's a rock guy. And then at the end of it, the man, he, he gets to the end of it and he just went, yeah. and you're like, oh, that's, that's, that's the jazz right there. It, it, it's just marvelous. So yeah. it's, it's good hands. And I, I'm eager to see Halloween kills. I'm eager to see Halloween ends. You know? How cool is that guys? He's eager to say, like, I mean, Patrick Melton, Marcus Dunstan, that just makes me love them, like, even more. I, I love them anyway, but it just makes me love them even, even because they're fans. They're fans of the franchise, and if it if the franchise isn't in my hands, as long as it's in good, capable hands, I'm still a fan, and I want to, you know, I want to see what's to come. They, you know, Marcus Dunstan said, I'm excited for Halloween Kills. I'm excited for Halloween Ends. I want to see where the story goes. I think that's so cool, you know? I love that. I got I got a really a real kick out of this um, this interview here, um, and I I saw super chat up here. I think Ebert. Yeah, Haley and everyone in the chat love the thing with two heads. Uh, would love to see you collaborate with Sean Clark. Yeah, I, mean, I I've thought about reaching out to Sean Clark and having him on the show and just doing like an interview because I'm a Sean Clark fan. Like, I I was watching you know, his, uh, on location stuff, um, Horace hollow grounds 20 years ago. Uh, when, when I, when I got, um, Halloween 25 years of terror, uh, you know, horse, horse hollow grounds on there. I think that might be the first one that I saw, but man, I've, that's one of those like bonus features that I've always looked forward to with every like Blu-ray of a classic movie, like say the fog, there's always like a horse hollow grounds episode in there especially with like shout factor and stuff like that sean clark is like he's uh a, you know a a big player when it comes to the horror community he really is and uh he's he's been doing it for so long you know you can tell he he's a dyed in the wool horror fan he loves it 